we have our equation sheet that we're going to be able to use on our final e exam here for our first semester. So what I've done to start is I've just crossed off the equations on here that we are not going to be using on this final exam for our first semester. And as we look to see the equations that we crossed off, we do have some equations here remaining. So when we have up here, this is getting to a question that might say how fast, and this one might say how far, and this is when we have no time given or no time able to be, able to be calculated. These are going to be the three main kinematic equations. So these big three equations right here, if you don't know which equation to use, the way I always start any problem dealing with kinematics is I deal with V, V naught, A, T, X, and X naught. If I look to see that I don't have time, that means I have to use this third part. If I look to see what other variables I have given, that will help tell me what it is I'm going to use in here. As we look at this next part, this is getting to the acceleration from this net force. This is that total force when we add it all together. And dividing by our mass, that will get us to our acceleration. But it's not just the mass, it's that total mass of the system. So the total force and the total mass, that is how you get to that acceleration when you're dealing with that object. As we're looking here, this is our equation for friction. So with friction, it depends on mu, that's that coefficient of friction, and this normal force. Where I know that what mu is, I see over here my coefficient of friction. This is the equation for our centripetal acceleration. So our centripetal acceleration is this V squared on R. And so recall it's centripetal because it's always pointed towards the center. So if I have something moving with a velocity, that acceleration is always pointed towards the center. As we look, continuing here, this is our moving energy, that kinetic energy. It has to be when something is moving, so we have this one-half mv squared as this kinetic. And then we know we can change this kinetic energy by doing work on the system, which is a force times a distance, or this force times this distance times this cosine of theta. So if we push on a box with a given force and it goes over an entire distance of say two meters and it had a force of six newtons then we would have a change in the energy of six times two which would be 12 joules and that would go into it moving if we don't have any friction and that's usually the case and if it took two seconds in order to do that, well, then the change in energy would be this 12 joules over two seconds, which would be six watts. So that's how much power it would take. And so if we were to take a longer period of time, we would have less power needed to do it. If we were to do it over a shorter period of time, it would take more power in order to gain that energy. As I continue us here, we are not dealing with this stuff until second semester. Um, this gets into something with a spring. I don't think we're getting into this on this test, uh, at least uh, dealing with the potential stored in a spring. This is um, getting to density. So this is talking about our density, which is mass divided by volume. As we look over here, we're going to have this gravitational potential. This UG, we like to write it as MGH, and so that's how we get to this potential. And that's going to be called this delta Y here because it's dealing with the vertical height change. But this MGH is what um, we typically write it as. And when we get to this, this is Newton's universal law of gravitation. Newton's universal. It's universal because it applies to everything that has mass and another mass that uh, they are attracted to one another divided by this radius r. That's the distance between those two objects. So if I were to take Earth and the moon, then we would have the radius going from the center of the Earth to the center of the moon. 
that would be that radius r. And we know that they're both going to be attracted to one another. And that would be one of those Newton pairs where it can show that they are attracted to one another. To get this g, we would take that force of gravity and divide out by your mass, and then we can find what g is. If we were to do this on any other planet, we could take the weight of an object and divide out its mass, and that will get us a g on any planet. And we also then can do the same thing here to calculate the gravitational potential. At any point, anywhere, wherever this mass is with respect to another mass, and we can get to this gravitational potential.